Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today on Tuesday, August the 9th, I do believe. Yes, it is August the 9th, 2022, about 3.35 Eastern Time p.m. as I speak. Guys, thank you as we continue to do this daily devotional. And today's title is Secrets Exposed. Secrets Exposed. I think we might learn something today, folks. I'm praying, you know, I pray that we do every day. You know, some of these devotionals touch us, touch us more than others, and some don't, you know, really don't speak to us much at all. But I guarantee you go back and read those scriptures. Uh, Daddy will be speaking to you some way. His word does not return void. Um, with that being said, our study scriptures today is out of uh, Psalm 32. It's a good one. Uh, they just have verses one through seven, and our lead off verse is verse five, Psalm 32, five. Guys, take the time to just read that whole psalm. It's, it's a beautiful one about David, um, knucklehead. But, uh, yeah, so Psalm 32, 1 through 7 is our study scriptures. And our lead off first, Psalm 32, 5, and the word of God says, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. And Marvin Williams is our author today, and he writes this. For many years, Lake Okeechobee hid its secrets in thick waters and layers of muck. That's uh, Lake Okeechobee behind me there. But in 2007, a, dro a drought shrank the Florida lake to its lowest level since officials began keeping records in 1932. You guys can do that math. 68, but I have a Yes, 70 some years, um, unveiling hundreds of years of history. Breaking through the bottom of the lake, archaeologists found artifacts, pottery, human bone fragments, and even boats. <laughs> wow, that was a good story. Oh, yeah, God is speaking. After King David committed adultery with Bathsheba and planned the death of her husband, Uriah. He covered his sins. David, David, David. He probably went many months conducting business as usual. As long as David cloaked his sinful secrets, he experienced God's crushing finger of conviction and his strength evaporated like water in the heat of summer. When Nathan confronted David about his sin, God's conviction was so great that David confessed his sins to God and turned away from them. That's repentant. Immediately, immediately, the Lord forgave David, and he experienced his grace. Uh, we got some more scriptures here. I'll add uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12, verse 13, and Psalm 51 also. Uh, our author finishes with this. When, when, when. We uncover our sins by confessing them to God. We are covered with his forgiveness. What an amazing feeling. Ah, indeed it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Guys, it's a good one. Secrets exposed. And I just love that the Lord found that picture for me in the background. And he spoke clearly. I mean, that's Lake Okeechobee there in the background, guys. That's a big lake. That's a big lake. Now, just imagine, you know, let God speak to you. That lake represents us, what's inside of us. You know, there, you can hide a lot of stuff in that lake. You can hide a lot of stuff in these bodies, in this flesh. But uh, you look at this picture, there's this child that looks like daddy holding his hand saying, okay, son, you know, we're going to we're gonna drain this lake and see what's in there that don't belong. That's just the image and the message I'm getting. I mean, just picture that that's God, that's daddy holding our hand right at the edge of this lake. He getting ready to drain it, and everything's going to be found. They're going to rake through and find all of these things. Why not confess now? You know, God already knows what you've done. He already knows it. He just wants you to confess. You know, and uh, I, I brought this up before, and it's a, I don't want to say it's a debatable topic, really, because I still cannot find it in the Word of God. I cannot find where it says we are to ask God to forgive us. We're to confess our sins. I find that all throughout scripture. And the only place I find, you know, God forgive us is in what man has titled the Lord's Prayer. But again, that's Jesus telling the disciples, hey, pray like this. 
you, you know, when you pray, pray like this, you know, Father, forgive us our trespasses. And, uh, you know, Jesus, he, what Jesus did on the cross, that, that took care of the forgiveness. We're forgiven. As long as you receive Jesus, you're forgiven, past, present, future. Yes, we need to confess our sins. Yes, we need to repent. Repent is simply turning around, going the opposite direction of what you were heading. If you're heading down that wrong path, whatever you might be doing that you shouldn't be doing, turn around, go the other way, stay away from it. And the further you go away, you know, the opposite direction, you know, the, 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 first, and God just put a message on me right now. This is kind of, it, it was a joke. Uh, I gotta, gotta share this. This, uh, this guy's out in the woods hunting and he comes across these two and I'm going to just, you know, gotta go with the joke. It's because it's a hillbilly joke. I'm allowed to, because, you know, because of my background, but this guy comes across these two hillbillies out in the woods, dragging this deer and they're huffing and puffing and they're dragging this deer. And the guy's like, what, what's going on? Why are you, why are you all out of breath and out of shape? And the, the two hillbillies like, man, we got this big old buck and we're trying to drag him back to the truck, but we're dragging him and his antlers keep grabbing a hold of everything. And the guy just shook his head. He's like, guys, he said, dragging by his antlers instead. So they're like, you know, why didn't we think about that? So they they picked him up by his antlers and started dragging. About an hour goes by and they look at each other like, man, that guy was right. This is a lot easier. And the other one said, yeah, but the only thing is now we're about five miles away from the truck. So <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. There ain't nothing wrong with a little humor. But, you know, when you repent, you're going in this direction. You stop and turn around and go the opposite way. And when you go the opposite way, you get further and further and further away from where you was heading. So, and you look, you read a story about David, you know, in, in Samuel, and you read the Psalms, the guilt and conviction that the Holy Spirit put on David. Now, keep in mind, this is before Christ came. This is before Christ walked the earth. So uh, he did not have the Holy Spirit dwelling and living inside him like we do. So this conviction came right from God. God put it in him and sent Nathan, you know, sent Nathan to convict him. And uh, I mean, there's so much in the Bible about David, how awesome he was. But here's another story. You know, somebody that was so amazing and awesome in the Bible that was not, you know, was not sinless. That was, I mean, he was, he got adultery, you got murder, you got uh, hiding and lying from God, all that stuff right here. King David himself. But guys, just a beautiful story. You know, just like I said, God already knows. He already knows what you've done. Just confess it to him like the Bible says to confess your sins to him. And just uh, it's just good stuff, guys. And, and you do when you when you confess this stuff, you're not worried about that lake getting drained and what daddy might find in the bottom. So if anybody's, you know, harboring something that you honestly you honestly truly believe that God doesn't know you did. Come on. Seriously. <laughs> just uh to do yourself a favor, get alone, find a quiet place, get in your car, drive somewhere quiet, and just open up to God, hit your knees, crying if you have to, and just just, just say, God, please, I know I'm forgiven, but this is what I've done, and I know it's wrong. I know it hurts your heart and hurts mine. I'm confessing to you this. I just, I just confess this to you now. So, guys, another beautiful one. Got some good scriptures, another good story. But, um, yeah, just get along with the Lord. Like we say this every day, guys. We need to get along with him every day, confess our sins, confess our shortcomings, and just constantly give him praise for the awesome daddy he is. So until tomorrow, Wednesday the 10th, you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you then. Love you all.